All right, hello, welcome into this PTU Options Weekly Recap. This is the recap for Friday, October 11. So we came into this week expecting some pretty decent movement. Okay, we knew the potential was there for some pretty decent volatility. And the reason for that was just the, the whole mess that was going on in Washington. Okay, we had the government shut down. We had rumors of uh, the debt ceiling and different deals that were going on. Um, as you can tell here, I'm not a big fan of the news. I, the news really doesn't mean anything to me. All I care about is the market's reaction to the news. So if we take a look at the three major U.S. index ETFs, these are the charts that I use to really get a feel for the overall market direction. It helps me form a plan of attack for the week. And when we came in and opened the week, um, the sellers came out um, in a big way here earlier in the week. Okay, we were very, very weak. The Dow uh, ended up leading the charge to the downside. The whole time, we were talking about this 200-period moving average, which is this red line. Okay, I actually thought it was going to be a stretch for us to get down there, but we did. Okay, and this was on Wednesday. And notice how powerful that 200-period moving average can be. Okay, that moving average was down at the 147 level. We essentially got down and touched that to the tick. And look what price action has done ever since. Okay, it has bounced straight higher. Um, the Dow was up over 400 points in the last two days. So it's a pretty powerful move off of this moving average. Okay, now we did have some headlines out of Washington, which definitely aided the, the bulls here, definitely fueled the fire to the upside. So now where are we headed from here? Well, now that we've bounced, we have the 50 period moving average, which is this yellow yellow line here. We've also got the 20 MA, which is this green line. These are the areas of resistance that we're running up against right now. If we break through these heading into next week, then we could be off to the races on the upside, right back up to the all-time highs. If these levels hold, price action could roll back over and head back down towards that 200 period moving average. The way I'm playing it, well, we have to respect this move to the upside. Okay, it's very, very strong. Do I feel that the lows are in at this point? Do I feel like we're going to shoot back up to the all-time highs on the Dow and the S&P? No, I do think we will continue to see some pressure on the downside at some point here over the next couple of weeks. It is good to see volume picking up. That is something that we really haven't seen much of so far this year. Uh, but for most of this week, we've seen phenomenal volume. So hopefully that will continue as we head into the rest of uh, the fall months. Okay, quick peek at the S&P. Okay, the S&P 500 breaking up above these resistance levels, above the 50 MA and the 20 MA. If we close above the 20 MA here today, looks like we, we also have the chance to, clo uh, to close above this 170 level. That's pretty strong for next week. Okay, we can make a, another run up to that high around 173.60. Okay, but keep in mind, we've made a very significant move here in the last two days to the upside. Okay, chances are price action is going to want to digest some of that move here next week. If we do roll back over to the downside, all of these areas of resistance then become support. So we've also got to get back down below the 50 MA. I've also got uh, another exponential moving average shown here. This is the 89 exponential moving average, this blue line. So that's another area that could uh, that could be an area of support to keep track of early next week. And that's at 166.24. And then finally over on the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ just continues to be strong here. Uh, we opened up the week. Uh, been a pretty uh, Pretty significant move to the downside, and that's the first this the first time we've seen any type of significant weakness on the on the Nasdaq uh, for weeks. So it was really key to see that we actually we actually saw a close below the 50 MA a couple of times here this week, which actually thought we may get some more traction to the downside. Okay, we all know what's happened here over the past couple of days. Price action has reversed, and now we're pretty darn close to those all-time highs. So we'll be tracking those highs here next week should price action continue moving higher. Uh, we got some pretty strong areas of resistance up here near the highs, right around the 79.75 level. Down below us, that 50 MA, pretty strong area of support at 77.44.
Okay, so for next week, again, if we do continue to break out to the upside here, uh, the NASDAQ will, will most likely go up and challenge the all-time highs. However, I do think that at some point next week, we will see some selling pressure kick back in. All right, let's take a quick peek at the reversal setup like we've done over the past couple of weeks just to stay consistent here. This setup just continues to thrive in these types of market conditions. Okay, for those of you that are new, this is our PTU reversal setup. This is just, a, it's, an, it's an extremely powerful setup. And we're looking for market extremes here. I want to see extreme overbought and oversold readings. And what we use to determine those levels, we use the percent R indicator. Pretty standard indicator in most charting platforms. Okay, so when I get oversold, what I classify as oversold is below the 10 level on percent R. Okay, once I get below 10, that's step number one for a setup. Step number two is I need a cross, I need a close up above my signal line, which I got right here back earlier this week. This was on Wednesday. Okay, so earlier in the week, okay, if we go back even further, if we go back to Monday, saw a pretty significant sell-off on Netflix. Okay, The reversal setup did a great job of identifying that setup. Caught a winner to the downside. Okay, That was a great move. And then we followed it up, but we saw that this, the really big selling pressure earlier in the week, we got oversold on percent %R. Once I got a close up above my signal line, that gave me an entry to go long. And this one triggered in here. This one triggered in on Wednesday. We came in uh, on Thursday, here yesterday. Netflix got upgraded here before the open, saw a pretty significant move to the upside, and also hit another full target. Okay, so we had close to we had close to three thousand dollars of profit per options contract on Netflix here this week. So pretty powerful moves. We caught the move to the downside, caught the move to the upside. Could you just go in and buy the shares of stock? You absolutely could. Okay, I like to make better use of my capital. I like to lower my initial cost, lower my risk. So I like to use the options contracts. Okay, so I'm going in here on this move to the upside. I bought some call options. Okay, I booked $1,300 of profit per contract. And this trade took less than 24 hours to complete. Pretty powerful move. Okay, so just trading one name. If you took two trades this week, okay, I haven't changed this chart at all since we started tracking these um, here in these videos the last couple of weeks. All you had to do to here this week was take two trades and you've booked close to $3,000 of profit. Okay, let's go forward. Here's why the system is so powerful. If I go over to Amazon, okay, you'll notice that the system looks exactly the same. I'm still looking at percent %R. I'm still looking at my signal line. In this case, when we got overbought back here, okay, we came into the week this week already in a short position on Amazon. Obviously, when we opened the week uh, in such a selling mood, uh, this trade worked out great on the downside. Okay, hit full target, booked close to $1,000 of profit per options contract on this trade on Amazon. We got oversold down here below 10. I got a close up above my signal line that got me into another long trade and we're currently riding out this long trade on Amazon. This is the second trade that we've um, that we've had here this week on Amazon. The nice part about this, I hit first target, I've moved my stop up to break even. So at this point, ideally I would love to see Amazon go up and touch 31350. Okay, if we hit that level that will be my full target and I'm out. The great part about this is my stop is at break even. So I've taken the risk off the table. If we come in early next week and Amazon decides to, to flip around and move lower again, okay, I've taken the risk off. That's a great position to be in. Okay, so we've booked $900 of profit so far this week. This current trade that's open, if we can get up here and hit full target, it'll be another another thousand dollars in profit per contract. Okay, so pretty powerful moves here this week. I've just shown you two stocks. Okay, we've got uh, we've got over three thousand dollars of profit on on just those two stocks. Okay, let's go forward. Let's go to Google. 
Okay, we came into the week. Okay, saw some selling pressure on Google. We got oversold down here. Once I got a close up above my signal line, I was ready to go. Got triggered in here at 858.44. We didn't quite hit the first target here this um, this afternoon. Unfortunately, we were looking for a first target up at around 874.70. If we would have hit that level, we could have moved the stop up from that full level up to break even. But at this point, we can't do anything with the stop. It's still down just below the 839 level. And I'm not going to move that stop up until we hit that first target. Okay, ultimately, I'll look to close the position if I can hit my full target up at 883. But we'll have to carry this into next week and see if the market cooperates here early next week. So still have a really nice profit on the table. We're, we have about $12 worth of, worth of profit here in the stock on this move to the upside. So the options are in some really nice profit as well. Okay, moving forward, pretty slow week on, on Apple. Apple's been very slow and choppy. Pretty unusual to see the overall market so active with Apple not participating. But that's just, that's been the story. The nice part about percent R and our reversal setup here, we're not going to force anything to happen. If Apple's not moving, if we don't have an extreme rating above 90 or below 10 on percent R, we're not going to force setups to take place. So this week was just a, a sit on hands week. There's nothing for us to do on Apple. So we're just waiting for our next extreme reading. Okay, over on the Dow, the system looks like it caught a really nice winner to the upside. Okay, I mean, you can see it pretty clearly on the chart here. The unfortunate part about this setup is the big move here yesterday in the Dow. The Dow closed up 300 points here yesterday. Unfortunately, we saw a big gap to the upside yesterday. And this trade actually gapped up above the entry point. So while the system looks like it caught it here, okay, I've got to be fully transparent here. I did not catch this. Okay, it gapped up past my entry point. I was not willing to chase the trade, so I'm not going to count this one in our results. Okay, the system did a great job of identifying the oversold reading here. We got the market extreme that we were looking for. It just moved too quickly without us here yesterday morning. Okay, so we're currently flat on the Dow, waiting for our next extreme reading. And then finally on FXI, very similar to Apple, and that while the rest of the market was moving really, really nicely this week, FXI was pretty slow. Okay, we're stuck in this sideways pattern here. We don't have an extreme reading on percent R. So again, on this reversal setup, we're not going to force things to happen. We're looking for those market extremes, which they don't happen all that often. Okay, we could go a period of days or even weeks in some cases where there is no setup. Okay, and that's just fine. As you can see over the past couple of weeks, the system does such a great job when we get those market extremes. We can book a lot of profit here quickly. Okay, with that in mind, I'm, I'm able to stay patient and I'm fully willing to stay patient. So between the closed trades and the few open positions that I just walked through, we've got over $4,000 of profit here this week. Okay, very, very powerful system. Okay, again, I'm show, I've been showing you the same names each and every week. I'm not changing settings. I'm not changing stocks that I'm looking at, trying to pick out the best setups for the week. I'm just showing you the trades as they come. All right, so hopefully you've seen the power of the system here the last few weeks. Okay, I know a number of you already have access to the system and have booked a lot of profits, and congratulations to those of you that have really happy for you. For those of you that this is this is somewhat new to you, okay, you may not be familiar with our style of trading or trading with the reversal setup. The really nice part about this, if you visit this site, premiertraderuniversity.com slash free options reversal, we'll give you access to the system on three of our favorite names, three of our favorite products to trade at no cost. Okay, that way you can get your hands on the system Okay, I've shown you thousands of dollars worth of profit here over the last couple of weeks. Okay, take advantage of this offer. The market's moving great. This, this system works great throughout the year, but especially as we head into these volatile times. Okay, the system is really tailor-made for what we're seeing in the markets right now. So um, definitely visit the site. 
Okay, take advantage of this free offer. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email, mike at netpicks.com. I'd be happy to work with you guys as you look to get up and running with your trading. So another great week for us. Looking forward to jumping back into some, some volatile price action next week. And I will be back with you guys here next week.